Hey there! In this video, we'll create a quick and simple to do web application using the ABP framework. So for this video, we'll be explaining this documentation with the UI framework as MVC and the database provider as MongoDB. Let's get started. So this is how it's going to look. We have a very simple to do list application and we can type here buy some milk, for example and maybe drink some water stay hydrated we could also say for example water the plants so we can get the list we can insert into the list and we can also delete from the list this is how it's going to look and let's get started so the first thing I'm going to do is install the ABP CLI. I'm going to open a terminal right here and I'll paste in the command, but it's already installed, so nothing's going to happen. And next up, I'm going to copy the command. And next up, I'm going to go to my solutions folder and I'll create a new folder right here. And I'm going to call it the same as our solution name to do app and I'll direct to it. Okay, now I'll paste it right here. So ABP new to do app, MVC is already there by default. We don't have to say, hey, I want the UI to be MVC. It's the first one already. So it is there by default. And the database provider is going to be MongoDB. Now, since it's opened this window, it means our solution has been created. Let's open it up and let's open our solution. So this is our domain driven design solution. And let's run the DB migrator to create the database and see the initial data. It's always best to run the solution from the beginning to see how it initially looks. And after it's done, we can run our web project. So it's open right here. Let's log in. And as you can see right here, this is how our initial solution looks. We have the administration section right here where it has the tenant management and identity management. The tenant management is where you can create a new tenant and that you can give the admin role to and they'll have their own roles and own users. Or you can just manage your own roles and users from this admin one instead of creating a new tenant. And we also have our project settings right here. Now let's stop running the solution and get to work. Now the first thing we'll work on is the domain layer. This application has a single entity and we'll start by creating it. Let's create a new to-do item class inside the to-do app domain project. I'm going to copy this and I'll come here to the domain project and I'll create a new class to-do item. And I'll paste the code right here. It'll inherit from basic aggregate root and good will be the primary key. In the next step is database integration. Let's set up MongoDB. We're going to add a new property to the MongoDB class inside the folder inside the MongoDB project. So let's go to MongoDB project. And we can find the folder right here and we can find the DB context class. And right here we can see that we can add our collections right here. So new line and we're going to put them right here. Let's also import the missing references and then let's copy the mapping code from here and let's put it inside the create model method. Here's the create model and let's put it right here. And by that we've mapped the to do item entity to the to do items table in the database. Now let's use the ABP repositories to save and retrieve the to do items in the project. So the first one we're going to work on is the application layer. An application service is used to perform the use cases of the application. We're going to need three, right? Getting the list of the to-do items, creating a new to-do item, and deleting an existing to-do item. Same as we did in the example right here. And so the first thing we'll do is create the interface, the I to do app service interface. We're going to copy this code and we're going to create the new interface in the application contracts project. Let's find the application contracts project right here. And let's create the interface right here. I to do app service. And I'll paste in the code right here. So these two methods will be returning a to do item DTO. And so let's create this class in the same project. 
to do item DTO. And I'm going to copy its code from here. And I'll paste it right here. And as you can see right here, the error is gone. It's just a very simple DTO class that matches our to-do item entity. And now we're ready to implement the interface. Now let's create the to-do app service class inside the application project. I'm going to copy the code from here. And we'll find the application project right here. And we'll create the class to-do app service. This is the class where we're going to implement the interface. And as you can see right here, it inherits from the application service class, which is provided by the ABP framework. And it'll help us with the three use cases that we're trying to make. So let's implement the interface. I'm going to copy the methods from here. I'm going to copy the first one, the getting to do items. And I'll paste it right here. Next up, the creating a new to do item. And last but not least, deleting a to do item. I'll paste it right here. So, ABP provides default generic repositories that we can use, and right here we've injected the iRepository, which is the default repository for the to do item entity. And after that, we've used its methods right here get list async, insert async, and delete async. So these are all standard repository methods to deal with the database. And by that, the application service is ready to be used from the UI. Now let's create the UI. As you can see, we're trying to do something very simple, simple as this. And so let's copy the index class. I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to find the web project, pages, index, and here's the class. And I'm going to replace the code right here. Now, this class uses the I to do app service to get the list of the to do items and assign the to do items property and we'll use it to render the to-do items on the razor page. Next up, I'm going to copy the CSHTML code. I'll paste it right here. Now we're using ABP's card tag helper just to create a simple card view. You could directly use the standard bootstrap HTML structure, but however, the ABP tag helpers make it much easier and much safer. Now this page imports a CSS and a JavaScript file, and so we should also create them. They're already here, let's just copy the code. We'll copy the JavaScript code first. And we'll paste it right here. So for this part of the code, we are only deleting a to-do item from the list. We're just registering to the click button and removing it. And we're also sending a message every time we delete something from the list that says, hey, that this to-do item has been deleted. And we saw them on the bottom right side of the page. And they're also being deleted from the DOM, so there is no need to refresh the page. And on the second part, we're just creating a new to-do item on the server. And if it succeeds, we will manipulate the DOM to insert a new to-do item element to the to-do list. And this way, we do not need to refresh the page every time we create a new to-do item. Now, the interesting part here is how we communicate with the server. There is no much time to talk about it, so see the dynamic JavaScript proxies and auto API controller sections to understand how it works. It'll be at the bottom of this page. It'll be right here. And finally, let's copy the CSS code. It's just very simple styling to make it look beautiful. And by that, we can run our project. And as you can see right here, this is our web app. Let's type in something. Buy some milk. Uh, drink more water and clean the balcony, for example. So we can also delete, and we can also get the list. And this is the to do items been deleted message that we were talking about. And I suppose we're done. And that is how to create a to do list web application using MVC and MongoDB. See you next time.